area where I think you were eyeing for the the Girl Scout project to go? Yeah, so it wouldn't be a half moon shape, I mean, mm -hmm. at least in theory. With, and you were kind of looking at that the, the actual butterfly um, shape? Yeah, they sent that to us. I think it's a cool idea. So I'm okay. just going to see what we get back as far as mm -hmm. offers. So far, I haven't gotten any offers. It is season. Okay. Yeah, and I, that, that I imagine to be more of a circle. So instead of a half moon, it would be a, like a full circle over here. Um, they also didn't show the ropes off fence that I would like to have throughout the border. Um, but is this an area too where we want to take that 30 feet down to more of a, a 10 foot buffer instead of what they show here? Or 6 or 10 feet? So when they say low profile prairie, is that like as tall as a table or is it? I, no, I'm yeah. thinking like 3 to 4 feet is what they mean by low profile. The only thing I'm nervous about is like People fish off the side. Yeah. Fish over here. Mm -hmm. And if you're drunk, you're going to just get your, you know, they're going to be getting caught and complaining mm -hmm. you know, that, that they're getting caught in the. And dogs. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to walk right through it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't do that. I don't. I'm just, yeah, I'm just nervous about the people. Prairie. Don't care. Mm -hmm. To be honest, they go right through the animals. Well, looking through other mitigation options, she talked about, from the extension, they talked about mm -hmm. large rocks. I don't know. That would be the alternative for the, the water's edge where people fish. Okay. That's something to look into. Yeah. I was also even thinking like like similar to um, the town grounds, like a, a sidewalk along the along the water's know, edge, a paved, a paved area along the water's edge. Mm -hmm. Like boardwalk. Yeah. Yeah. Like kind of like how town you know town grounds yeah. has with the lights. Yeah. So probably. I'm, I'm thinking like a, a six foot at least walking path along water's edge here. It would make the maintenance along water's edge probably easier, you mm -hmm. know, for maintenance purposes. And it could give a buffer, it gives a buffer, but people can also be up to water's edge without prairie space. Yeah. Well, if we're going to think about adding a boardwalk, would we want maybe to have a little more inset than the one that we have here so that we could have like a vegetative barrier like at the water, like in front of it? You know what I mean? Yeah, so are you like in this area here outside of the water or just at water's edge there? Like just at water's edge because I know that adding shoreline plants helps with filtration mm -hmm. and erosion. And geese. Are we, there's a, is there, is there a break wall here? Is there a metal break wall in it? I think it's just in the center just part. Right. Yeah. It's there. I don't the whole So then maybe it's just, you know, this spot. It can, and then that over here. center right, piece right here. See on this side. Uh, starting here, I think, to here, there's a metal um, break, break wall. Mm -hmm. But then over here, it's just kind of like open. It's not, there's nothing protecting it other than probably some rocks or something. Yeah. Kind of like natural. Rocky, yeah. yeah, it's like a natural like mud rock. So maybe, you know, we identify this area as like you know keep maybe keep the prairie up to the rocks there and then from that point where the metal break wall starts mm -hmm. further concrete. on, have it concrete or some sort of paver and then have I'm even thinking like the sidewalk there. No, they've got, well, they've got two right there, so that would be appropriate. Um, okay. then, you got the, then you got the prairie mm -hmm. here with the pavilion and the bathroom. So, like, if, if someone hypothetically did rent this out one day, people wouldn't be kind of, you know, it gives you some privacy at least in front of the, the pavilion. Mm -hmm. What about like a, a dock type setup somewhere like they have at Lemon Lake where people fish? Oh, like a like an overlook. Mm -hmm. That could be considered. Yeah, we have to look at like the permanence of it, though. Yeah, During and what time. DNR will allow. Yeah, it's going to be because it would have to be metal, metal uh, holes for the yeah the port on it. Likely would just probably would may have to be removed in the winter. Yeah, it might have to be removable. Likely have to be. I do like that. 
people like their little fishing yeah. tours like that. <laughs> you're, you're right. yeah, right. oh, yeah. I'm just thinking about them. Yeah, just giving people access to the lake that don't normally, you know, normally have it. Want to make sure that we maintain that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, even if we go concrete, we can have like little like, ledge, kind of ledge where it doesn't feel like it's gonna fall into the water. Mm -hmm. you know? Like a uh, guardrail. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. I think the word guardrail. Um. So I think are, are we good with in the southern corner here? Then that kind of being more taken up by the pollinator garden and maybe a cutting the garden space in half throughout the rest of the area generally to give more room in the, the park. And then we have a six to eight foot boardwalk up until where the break wall stops. <clears throat> So you're on the side of the guard, the pollinated instead of a path? Yeah, so, so do a, a like a six or eight foot concrete or paver path the way along the water's edge here, all the way across, as, as long as that metal guardrail is there. Doing a pollinator garden that kind of takes up a good chunk of this area. Um, by this house, mm -hmm. and then reducing the overall width of the pollinator garden that they have shown here to about half. So that way we open up a little more grassy area between the parking and where the prairie starts, or prairie slash pollinator area. Do um, we just want all of this to be the pollinator garden in the corner here? Yeah, that's what I kind of draw. Oh, right okay. There. All right. This whole right here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the garden itself doesn't So we'll just take this off. I think it's wonderful. Do we want those two proposed trees right where they have them by the, the center boardwalk there? Uh, I kind of like it because there's only one pavilion that's like potential mm -hmm. and it's going to be over to the other mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. And then they have a shade tree over here as well. We can use some more decorative trees around the area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I I do like where they have the, the paths there. Um, and are these like concrete or paper? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure the material they have marked for it. Metal gate. Yeah, about that. I remember seeing. Maybe on a different page. Yeah, it's it's on this next page where they show that it's um, proposed concrete walk. So I have to imagine that that's also a proposed concrete walk through mm -hmm. there. We'll just have them short, shorten that up. And then when they say turf grass, is that just. They're just referring to short grass. Yeah, the Kentucky blue. Yeah, okay. They're going to plant it from scratch in the dirt? Um, I think that's what they, they show in here, and I think they used an older photo that has this mostly as mud. Um, so that's already been turned. So, yeah, it would just be probably whatever they disturb as part of the construction that they would just, yeah, fix it. Yeah, I like doing this garden over here, so this pollinator garden, especially being neighborly to this house too, people won't be able to get right up next to their property. Yeah. You know, and it'll be something nice to look at. So when you say pollinator garden, you're talking about the prairie aspect of it? Mm. What are you saying? Extend out, extend out the butterfly garden? Because this is the oh, okay. pollinator. So what if we, circle. yeah, I mean, what if we, um, wait, where's the... I'm like getting lost with all the circles and stuff. <laughs> like, if have, like if we had, like what if we move this pollinator garden to the corner here? Well, it's not going to be like a tall barrier look. It's going to be like a variety of heights mm -hmm. and colors. And, but 
But so do you imagine it being something where you could walk all of them? And that's fine. I'm not even saying it's like a privacy barrier, but mm -hmm. more just like people can't aren't going to walk through the pollinator garden, right? Like it would be or explore. Or well, it has walking paths, but oh. in it's like the body of the butterfly. It's mm -hmm. the walking path, so you can look on both sides oh, okay. of the wings. Okay. It's in the shape of a butterfly, yeah. if, if that's what we're mm -hmm. doing. That may be good then too, for it to be on the corner. Because if you're going to have, you know, like a the, in the, it in the butterfly shape and the walking path slash body of the butterfly is in this direction, and you've got the two wings on either side, then we can put a gate here, and you can then connect it into the walking path, and then proceed to go down the boardwalk. Mm -hmm. It will get plenty of In the winter, it doesn't. Well, that's a you know, proposed, so that, that may not be a good location mm -hmm. for that tree. Mm -hmm. That one may need to get axed. I'm just drawn off the paper. Yeah, maybe it's a pretty bush. There's a space to fill. Mm -hmm. Similar to how they have. Um, we don't want to take any trees, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's not existing yet, so we're just yeah. removing it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because there's going to be some trees coming down here shortly. Yeah. <laughs> the public safety building is going to require them to be moved. I think this is the spot I should maybe even ask this question. Okay, some of the trees that we're going to be taking down for the public safety building. Mm -hmm. Are, were some of those trees planted in memory of? If you can find a sign on them that shows me that, okay. Mary Joan is certainly going to say they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, that's all. Um, but if she can provide me a list, we will certainly replace any of them. So, like, I was but here, they would be like. Water. They have to. I mean, water they have to. It's thing. not something oh, we can do. No, no, no. I want. We're in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. water line where, where they sit, so we can't, unfortunately, keep them. I don't. I don't know the best way to handle that. I'm going to reach out to Diane Justice to see if she has a list of um, trees that were dedicated on the town ground site yeah. um, and who they were dedicated to, and if nobody has a a list. Shame on them for not keeping record. Yeah. Because quite frankly, they should have a plaque on any tree that's dedicated to anybody. Yeah. Or they should have kept a list of who they were dedicated to. Yeah. Because otherwise, they're just going to claim that you know. There's that paperwork. They're they're going to claim that 50 <laughs> trees were dedicated yeah. and we only cut down 40, and they're going to say, well, these 50 people. I'm going to say, well, your math doesn't add up because there weren't that many. No. Yeah. But, um, just trying to stop the problem. Yeah. yeah. It's not that evil kind of manager, it's just... It'd even be cool if it was like... He's got a chainsaw and he's crazy yeah. with it. At midnight, I'll go there in the morning. Yeah, we need to know that. Yeah. 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 For the town ground site, then, I'm thinking definitely the same thing as up to this one. They, they're showing this 60 to 70 feet wide. I'm thinking we cut it down to 10, maybe 15 tops. Um, Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, I do like their placement of the two trail areas here where people will access through. Um, but one thing that I, I think we did ask for that they didn't put on here is the the band shell, the proposed future band shell. Um, I would like them to add that in because this was not, I don't think this, this took into account that, that band shell. So are we we are looking, here, where's the location? It, it, the, the proposed future band shell is exactly where the um, 
Yeah, the current one is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it does. It does go a little further back with a concrete yeah. patio type of um, area because mm -hmm. it was proposed to be used from both the water and from the um, the, the foyer in front. Um, so I just like this shape down a bit more. Again, to about. 10, 15 feet if we have to keep it you know, within 20 feet as the recommendation. I would be in favor of just mixing the prairie all together. That's what I'm saying. doing other yeah. options for this mitigation. Okay. For these parks. But I just think that people who would be on the boardwalk, there would be this really tall grass behind them, and I don't know how enjoyable the experience would be. Yeah, and that's why when, I, when we had that discussion with Fish and Wildlife, I wanted, you know, nothing taller than three to four feet for grass um, because when you do get to some of those native prairies and they're saying like seven feet tall that's I mean, you're gonna get, you're you're gonna get lost in there. Much, right? unless you're an MBA style you're gonna get lost well yeah I was gonna ask if we I mean I guess for the goose mitigation that's you know a good point but if we don't need it you know it's just it's taking up a lot of green space yes. as people are using now like even mm -hmm. after I'm just like uh, um, you know, like summer fest and Labor Day fest and whatever. People kind of walk or walk around that area. Oh yeah. Enjoy the lake. You know, well, kind of in the grass. For fireworks, they all line up here. Yeah. For, for that. And we're just taking real estate away from the people that you know okay. that don't have access. So just mix it entirely. Yeah. I also okay. imagine like if there's kids and you'll be able to see them as well. Yeah. Walking, <laughs> telling, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Hazard in that way too. So then, I mean, really, then we could get rid of like these little entrance garden things that are here mm -hmm. and maybe place them, you know, somewhere else. Maybe even like more, at the or there. like a bed looking area, like the original thing. Mm -hmm. And the metal gates obviously would still with need them. I like the unison and I think we need something to draw more color and give a better look, but I mean, if we, we won't need that gate. Like we move in here. Because um, I, I know a gate is also an option for mitigation as well. Yeah. We would just need a little lower to go with it for the mm -hmm. And then I have one thing to throw on if I can. You know, as you walk along this, you know, lake here, mm -hmm. it's got all the fracks in the water right there, right? Yeah. Can we, like, put new ones in or nicer ones or brace them up or, because right now they're so low. That they collect every bit of crap, you know, and it mm. always looks bad. Every time you're walking along that shore, there's a Doritos bag in there, and there's a. Is there anything they could do on the other side, the actual lake side? Ah, sure, we could probably put more. Something, it's just. More up in there. You know, to make it like angles like this. Mm hmm. Well, it's good something catches it, so we pull it out. Well, yeah, it's okay. You don't want it to float it. Yeah. Well, there's, it is six o'clock. Yeah, we won't start at one time. Yeah, we can certainly, um, I don't know if there want, you want to establish at the meeting a two-person committee to continue reviewing this um, at future time. We can organize a, you know, I'll have Margaret kind of try to organize a time to meet. Yeah, we can come up with a committee. I think that's a good idea. Okay, perfect. Yeah, because we'll probably also then um, that two-person committee then would, I could also schedule a time with JMA themselves to go over that with them. Um, again, have them give us a proposal that also shows the band shell. Um, perfect. Yeah, looks good. Looks good.
Today, I'd like to call this April 6, 2023, Park Center <coughs> order at 6.02. We'll start with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Mr. Marquardt? Present. Mr. Rodriguez? Present. Ms. Miller? Present. Mr. Salatis? Present. We'll just let the record reflect that Mr. Miller and Mr. Sharp are here. Okay. So, starting out, we have a presentation by Andy Anderson with the Lakeside Artist Guild. Thank you. It's good to see everyone. Um, so I'm starting our fundraising for our third uh, annual now. This is the third summer we've done co a concert series in our parks here. I have <coughs> our donor packet and our dates with concerts, if I can give that. Sure. Yeah. That. Thank you. And then that. Hand it down. Um, and um, basically we have a, a series of concerts. Last year I think we did five. Uh, we ran them the, from July until Labor Day and kind of sprinkled them out throughout the summer. And um, basically my the Lakeside Artist Guild and Academy is a nonprofit. We fundraise the money. Um, to pay the musicians to come and perform on the stage and and then we present them to the public and we accept donations to pay for the cost of that. Um, one of the things I've done this year to kind of expand it, it used to be the original guild of musicians that I formed during the pandemic. This year I'm actually having us present some outside artists as well. So I'm kind of expanding our footprint a little bit so that we have a little more diversity. We have a swing band we're going to present that's going to be on July 30th. Um, we have a Brazilian guitar player that, that I've heard play. He's amazing. Um, the real deal. He's going to come and perform on July 20th. And then we're presenting a brass quintet on July 9th. So instead of just our string band that we usually do uh, Baroque music and Beatles songs and all sorts of stuff, uh, we're going to have a little more variety this year. Um, and so, uh, my, my ask, the reason I'm presenting this to the board is I'm hoping we can create some kind of a partnership so that I don't have to raise the uh, venue fees, which including signage and the rental and the security, it winds up being about three grand total for the whole summer. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, somehow the park board can help me out with at least that cost and then we can partner and I can put the park board as a part sponsor of the summer series and eventually have it grow into something even bigger. Um, each year I'm trying to add more variety and more regular shows so that it's not just one every three weeks but that we can have maybe something going on every week on that stage. Um, and I'm happy to to go about the community and try to create something uh, on the scale of like our version of a Ravinia sort of arts festival. Um, and it seems like that would be part of what the park board exists to do, which is to create beauty in the community in our parks. And that's, um, that's what we're doing. And so I'm, I'm, that's what I'm asking for is some kind of a partnership. Okay. Well, thanks for coming out, Andy. Thank you. Um, I really love what you guys do. I love instrumental music. I know a lot of people do. And I think it's really cool, the expansions that you've added to your list. Mm -hmm. um, we have been in contact with legal, and we're still mm -hmm. trying to figure out the details of what that would look like. I sure. mean, ultimately, the contract would be through the council, but mm -hmm. we would like to see what we can do okay. as far as a partnership with the park board itself. That's outstanding. So, thank you. Thank you I for appreciate coming. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the consent agenda, um, looking for a motion to approve the March 2nd, 2023 meeting minutes. Or actually, I got a list of things. The March 2nd, 2023 meeting minutes is item one. Item two is claims. Parks and general 
and Parks and Rec General Fund, $105,758.41. Park Impact Fee Fund, $14,370. Parks and Rec Non-Reverting Fund, $1,251.05. Clubhouse Non-Reverting Fund, $3,229.96. Total expenditures, $124,609.42. And item three, we have donations, spring soccer sponsorships, in-kind donations in the amount of $150 each sponsorship. We have uh, from Froggy Latin Kitchen, Action Plumbing, People's Bank, Strack and Van Til, Lighthouse Restaurant. And we thank all of them for their donation. So now I'm looking for a motion for those three items to approve. I'll make a motion to approve Motion. Three items. Motion by Greg. Can I get a second? I'll second. Second by Paul. Can I get a roll call? Okay, Mr. Marco Mr. Yes. Marquardt. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Okay, and old business. Um, consider garden landscaping project at Park of the Red Cedars, Town Complex, Lakefront, Bartlett Walberg Park, and North Park. Um, so that, we had a word session that is still under discussion, so I guess at this time um, I would be looking for a motion to defer. Or should we um, make a motion to form a committee to discuss further? Yeah, I would defer this item and then just amend the agenda to include a motion to create a the subcommittee um, of two members that can go over the, the landscaping proposal or project. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to defer this line item um, to the next meeting and then I'd like to amend the agenda to, um, to try to establish a two-person committee to review the, the drawings for the <coughs> landscape architect project. A uh, motion. Motion by Paul. And I'll second that. Second by Greg. Can I get a roll call? Mr. Marquardt? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Under new business, item one, we have approval of bid award for parks projects. Um, it would be a recommend, recommendation to the town council, but um, at this time, there's a lot of factors that we're looking into. We just got one bid um, a couple days ago, so we need to review for completeness. Um, is there any discussion from the board? No. No, I think yeah, I think we need. Um, we just we just like you said, we just received the bid, and um, we're not ready to make a motion on this. Okay. Um, so I guess I would like to take it under advisement for 30 to 60 days. Could I get a motion, or I'd like to solicit a motion to defer that while we're... I'll motion to defer for 30 to 60 days. Motion by Paul? I'll definitely second that. Second by Greg. Can I get a roll call? Mr. Marquardt? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. New business, item two. Approval of new programs, uh, wine tours, cub tours, garden tours, field museum, a lot of stuff. Is there, you want to take over that? Hope? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is um, Julie from Lassen's Museum and I would like to partner and do a field trip to the field museum. We would take um, a 14 passenger bus from Shea from the Chicago Safari. He did a presentation in the fall. Um, and he is the cheapest of the bus tour people that I have checked into. Um, the charge would be $48 per person. The Field Museum is waiving the fees to get in and the parking is free. The date that would work would be Monday, September 25th. Um, if we don't have 10 people signed up by September 1st, we would have to cancel the program so that we don't lose any money on it. I would also like to use Shea's Chicago Safari Service for other trips and tours. 
in discussion with the seniors and other members in the community. I believe a winery tour up in Michigan, a Cubs game trip, trip and garden tours would be something that the community would like to see. I know that the parks did a Cubs trip in 20, I think it was 2019, and they had 49 people sign up for that. So I think those kind of programs would do well. Um, then the seniors um, have discussed with me programs they would like to see, such as a card club, a craft club, and a senior mixer night with music and dancing. And these programs can be cheap to nearly free for us to do. Um, it, one suggestion is that they would um, pay for the refreshments or bring their own refreshments for these programs. Um, and then Diane with Blue Fox Fitness would like to do have an exercise class for seniors. It would be twice a week for four weeks, and the cost would be $40 to the seniors. It would take place at the Blue Fox Fitness, and I would not have to be there for each um, class. The Parks pr Department would just promote the program, basically. And um, so I would handle, like, sign-ups and promote it. And Diane is going to do a senior social presentation for me on the importance of staying active on uh, May 5th. And Diane and I would also like to partner and do a program for children either in the summer or the fall. Um, and that would be a program promoting playing outside and staying active for kids. Um, we, we don't have uh, the title for that program or any of the um, plans yet for it, but it would just be like one of the ideas I had was like, um, I used to do this with the library kids, an uh, obstacle course would be one day, and then so like each day we would do some kind of activity outside. Um, so it would probably be like a week-long program for like an hour each day after school, or if we do it in the summer. Um, it would be during the middle of the day. Um, I've been in touch with a lady named Nicole Harmon. She's the director of a wildlife rehabilitation and education center. Um, Humane Indiana is the name of it. Um, she can do a program about birds of prey. She will have an owl to view and she will educate on owls and other birds of prey. And I, I would like her to do a presentation in combination with our kids' art class. We're painting owls um, this April 21st. And her cost would be $175 for the presentation. Um, and then if you, if you guys are willing, um, she could do another presentation, all ages presentation, about her birds of prey. Um, and she also talks about the, um, the flu that's affecting waterfall and being passed on to birds. Um, and I would like to do that one in either May or June. I would like to do a beach glass jewelry making class in the Lion's Den shelter um, on the beach. The class would be very inexpensive to do. Um, the supplies would only cost $30 to um, supply all the supplies. Um, I took a class on learning how to make beach glass jewelry, and I can teach the class myself, so we don't have to pay an instructor. Um, I have some of the supplies, and the other supplies can be purchased for $30. Um, so then we would just charge like $3 per person to do that, that class to cover the cost of the, the supplies. I would also like to do a craft show in September at the clubhouse. Craft vendors could set up inside the clubhouse. And then um, we could um, have a couple food trucks outside as well. And then um, this could either be a parks program or um, just Bill Hill again from Bethel Church. Um, he would like to either do a project himself with his youth group or partner with the parks and I I could just be there to guide them, but they were looking for something to do. Um, with He has 12 teens from his youth group that would be willing to paint. If we need anything painted or work in the garden, if we need anything done in the dog park, he said whatever we'd like for them to do. They're willing to come and work. Um, and I let him know that I would ask what projects we would have for him. It was very nice of him to offer. Yeah. Please tell him thank you. And yeah, there's always stuff we can have them do. Yeah. Um, 
I like all these ideas. I like the, um, how we're mixing education and fun. And the seniors came up with a lot of really nice ideas. Yeah. So I'm I'm thinking this would be added to our <coughs> our fee structure for events. We'll have to those that aren't outlined within the existing fee structure. Yes, one will have to be. Um, those have to be identified, created, added into it, and uh, the recommendation would have to come from the park board to the council for their adoption. Okay. I'm not seeing like a, a total dollar amount at this time, so are we just recommending that the council review these items? Um, yeah, if possibly if, if uh, park staff could um, identify those programs that, uh, and hope you can work with me, and we, we can identify those programs that are out, outlined already within the fee structure. Um, and have one created for those that aren't, um, and then we can either bring it back to the park board or just send it directly to the council. Okay. Any discussion on the board? Um, oh. Yeah, I have, I have a few questions. Mm -hmm. um, so for the field museum bus trips, mm -hmm. um, it's a Monday. Yeah. So is that going to be geared towards kids or adults? Uh, adults. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, and then the New Fox Fitness Senior Fitness Class, you said it's $40, um, yeah. and we'd be promoting it. and collecting times. What do you know what the the actual cost is for for someone to sign up? Um, like how, if they didn't use uh, outside of this program if they were to do a membership, I believe the membership is fifty five dollars a month. Okay. For their so they would be getting like a discount a little bit. And how, how often would it would it go? Um it would be a one month and then then I guess we would see if we wanted to continue. So it's just one it. class yeah, for the one month. It would be um, twice a week for four weeks. Right. Okay, and so, forty dollars for the yeah. Okay. So that so those eight classes mm -hmm. would be forty dollars. Okay, so it'd be like five dollars a class. Okay, so I just want to make sure that the seniors can't just get that same price and then we're still, you know doing them. Advertising for it right. on behalf of Blue Fox Fitness. Right, make no, sure our, right, right. right. The residents this are getting would be a like discount. A special yeah. to get them in and to promote the parks. As long as they're getting a discount on what, yeah, yeah. What, they what they would, would yeah. normally pay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then they are hoping to do um, to get the silver sneakers. There's a silver sneakers program, but they don't, they don't have that in place yet. So okay, you probably after they get that in place. They don't need this program to um, to be in place because that's much cheaper. I think it's twenty five dollars a month for senior for the silver sneakers program. Okay, and then the birds of prey. Um, obviously, there's a cost associated with that. Does she have like a cancellation policy? Of, if um, oh, um, I do not know about that. Yeah. Um, if if we don't have enough people signed up for mm -hmm. the class, yeah, I would have to ask her about that. It would probably like we would have to cancel a week before. Okay. That's how the the beekeeping class was. We just have to cancel a week before and then then um, not be out that one hundred and seventy five dollars. Okay. Any other discussion? Good. So I would be looking for a motion to approve these new programs. And then. Uh, um, have hope uh, create a fee structure right. for items. So, do we want to just make a motion that um, if if the items that don't fall in our current fee structure can be recommended to the town council? Mm -hmm. Also, yeah. Okay. So, a motion to approve these new programs with uh, the fee structure mm -hmm. being examined and forwarded for council review. I'll motion. Motion by Paul. And I will second that one. Second by Greg. Roll call, please. Okay, Mr. Marquardt? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Item three under new business authorization to obtain quotes for ADA swings for parks out of capital improvement funds. Um, <coughs> so, yes, this would just be uh, if it's Park Board's desire um, an authorization to allow the staff to go out and get quotes for, for this product. Um, and then we'll bring those, you know, obviously those quotes will then be brought back uh, to the Park Board. Um, was there a, and I, this may have been a Dale item, uh, but was there a number of um, swings that um, the Park Board was interested in looking at or just getting a quote for 
Um, we we wanted at least two swings. That would be all ability swings. Okay. Per at playground least, at, or at per least at a playground. Um, well, at least one playground that you know. Okay. I don't. We don't know how much those are yet, or anything. We haven't gotten any close. Okay. Well, we certainly want to provide um, ADA compliant equipment and opportunities for those with disabilities to enjoy. So I, I would be looking for a motion to approve seeking out quotes. I'll motion. Motion by Paul. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Greg. Roll call. Mr. Marquardt? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Item four, we have approval to hire soccer referees. I know that that was posted. Hope you have any updates regarding Yes, um, I, I interviewed four um, people for that position. Um, there's three teen girls um, that currently um, play soccer mm -hmm. and also um, one of them have repped for um, the Lowell Parks soccer department, so she'll, she'll be fantastic. All three of them will be fantastic. All the references um, were really great. And then there's one, um, the fourth uh, person would just be like a fill-in. He, he wanted to coach, but it was after we already got all the coaches we needed. And um, so it was kind of like, well, we don't have a spot for you, so if you want to fill in, um, when the girls can't make it. So he would just be like a fill-in position. He has um, been in soccer for his whole life um, and just knows a lot about soccer. So he'd be like a good resource to use if we need him for a referee. But the three teenage girls would be fantastic as well. Um, so that would be my recommendation, at least the three girls and then Possibly the um, older gentleman that would like to fill in if needed. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know if you need to know anything else about the girls. I do have their applications here if you want to look at um, what the references said and everything. Okay. And that's a sufficient number of people to run the program? Yeah. Yeah, the three girls would be sufficient. If, and they said that they could make all the Saturdays that um, we have games on. But I would like just a, a, like a sub, and that would be that, that sure. gentleman would be the sub for that okay. if, if they can't make it for some reason. I like that they have the soccer background and experience. Yeah. Further comment regarding the referees? Well, I'm sure they, I don't know what their ages are, but. Um, there's two that are 16 and one is 17. Okay. So would we do any background history on these or just? Yes, they would, they would do just the usual that every um, employee does, the background Perfect. stuff, yes. I'm good then. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I would just be looking for a motion to approve the hire of the soccer referee. I'll motion. Motion by Paul. And I will second it. Second by Greg. Roll call. Mr. Marquardt? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Item 5, consider having Parks and Recreation representation at Chamber of Commerce Business Showcase. Um, who has details on that? Um, so we are a member of the Chamber of Commerce and we um, are at a sponsorship level that gives us a booth at the um, uh, business showcase. Uh, the Parks and Rec Department last year was uh, allowed the booth that the town has and we'd like to offer that again to the Parks and uh, Parks, Parks Department so that way they can again um, communicate to the, the um, community what we have to offer. And I was in attendance that last year. It's a good opportunity to meet community members. Are. Is there any discussion? Who wants to go? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess I'm looking for a motion to consider having representation by the Parks Department. I'll motion. Motion by Paul. I'll okay. second it. Second by Greg. Roll call. Mr. Marquardt? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Miss Miller? Yes. 
Item six, approval to obtain quotes for porta potties for parks. Similar to the, the ADA swings, and uh, this was also an item that was uh, done last year. Um, with your approval, we'll um, solicit uh, quotes for um, porta potties in the same parks and locations and, and the number of porta potties as last year. Um, and then we'll bring it back to the board for a decision. Okay. okay. Well, um, it would be good to have bathroom options and while we wait to figure out the bid process. So, can I get a motion to approve obtaining quotes for porta potties? I'll motion. Motion by Paul. Second. Second by Greg. Roll call. Mr. Marquardt? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Item seven, discussion item, Potawatomi Park dog waste, signage, and fines. So, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Did you have something? Did you want me to comment on that? Yeah. Um, that's on there because um, I had some calls um, about a lot of dog waste at Potawatomi Park. Um, and they're basically asking for um, signage in the park. I don't know if we want to um, address that. Um, she, and she said possibly fines. I don't know if that, you know, I don't know anything, of, you know, how that would work. But um, she said that there is quite a few people who um, leave dog waste in the park. And, um, you know, her and her grandkids are constantly stepping in, her dog are constantly stepping in it. And um, she said that she did see one gentleman do it, like she witnessed him do it. And I kind of let her know that that might be the best way to make it stop happening and just kind of be like, hey, pick it up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate that. The community is bringing things like that to our attention. Uh, we did order garbage cans, so that should help when those arrive. Um, definitely wouldn't hurt to look into adding a sign if it's a really big problem and it's reoccurring. So. And we do have the currently we don't we don't have like dog you know waste we trash don't bags dog, yeah, like available for people. Stuff. You will. Mm -hmm. We're going to have them pretty soon because the equipment went in. Well, we got well, the dog park, but yeah, the right, park. Right, but not outside yeah. the dog park. We and definitely, she, I, I would say we don't want to install those at this park because this is not an area where we want to encourage people to Yeah, to yeah. Those yeah. Those people have yards of their own where they could have yeah. dogs, you know, and clean it up themselves. Yeah. Um, but certainly we could um, have Public Works create a sign. I'll have Dave review the ordinance to see if there's a fine structure, but certainly, um, a bit of community policing is what's going to really take care of the issue. Yeah. Yeah, we should put something up. But um, so, can I get a motion to look into adding signage and taking care of this issue of the Potawatomi Park? I'll make a motion. Motion by Jack. I'll second. Second by Paul. Roll call. Mr. Marquardt? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Item eight, discussion of Midwest training proposal to waive registration fees to Cedar Lake residents. Hope, I believe you were yes. in contact. Yes, um, I got an um, email from her this week. Um, they used to have a partnership with us. What she wants is um, the ability to put it in our quarterly newsletter that they will waive the fees of Cedar Lake residents, the registration fees. Um, Margaret did say that she would need to send me um, a, a written proposal letter and also their policy on this. Um, so I did email her back and she, she didn't email me back this week. Um, I believe that was on Monday and I haven't gotten anything back from her. I did find in our, um, in our computer what they did have with us. Um, before. Um, so it is in the minutes. Uh, I'll just mark it on here. If you guys want to review that, um, it was from 2016. Um, and I don't know if she, I don't know if she'll get back to me. Um, I would 
maybe recommend deferring the site. Yeah, I think, get, I think we should defer until we get until a formal sends, proposal. Okay. But I do know that I wish Marga was here because she had good information on it. Um, that they did have this partnership in the past yeah. before COVID and then kind yeah. of went away. Yeah. Uh, so um, at this time, I'm looking for a motion to defer until we have additional information regarding the Midwest training proposal. I'll motion. Motion to defer. by Paul. I'll second that. Second by Greg. Roll call. Mr. Marquardt? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Item 9, approval to purchase first aid equipment for a soccer program in the amount of $66.23. Um, I know Hope you did purchase kits, but then you were... Yeah, um, each of the coaches got a first aid kit um, in, their, in their coaches' kit. Um, when I took my CPR training um, in order to, if any kids have anything going on during practices or games, I'll be there. Um, and then you know, this would be things that I would have on hand in case a kid twisted their ankle or um, bumped heads or anything like that. So it's basically like um, the gauze, the um, splint, um, it's like a temporary splint, um, it's the last two slides of the thing, um, gauze, the shears to cut um, if we need to cut anything, you know, shirts or anything to get to the wound or anything. And then um, also a package of I, um, instant cold packs where you just break them in if they get a sprain or bump heads or anything like that. So, all of those. Definitely, I could see as being important to have on hand for this kind of event, and just in general, I'm sure if they're not used, we'll use them for something else. Is there any uh, comment by the board? No. All right. Then I'm just looking for approval to purchase the additional first aid equipment at the amount of sixty-six dollars and twenty-three cents. A motion to approve. Motion by Paul. Second. Second. Second by Greg. Roll call. Mr. Marquardt. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Reports, um, clerk treasurer is not here. Is there anything you're absent? Um, I'll just state that um, currently you're trending very well for your budget. You're at 22% um, uh, consumed, used otherwise. Um, so that's pretty well for being into uh, April. Um, other than that, no. Okay. Um, item two, recreation coordinator's events report. Okay. Since the last prep board meeting we had, um, we've had the rec desk trainings. Um, so the rec desk is the online sign up system that we will be putting in place hopefully soon, um, at the beginning of this month sometime. Um, so that is all completed, um, ready to go. Um, I had STEM club, senior social, the soccer coaches meeting, bingo, interviews with the soccer referees, adult paint class, clean the parks program, gardening 101 class, kids art class, the Easter egg hunt, and another STEM club. And we've gained four more volunteers to help with our programs. We're getting a lot of positive feedback from the community. Josh, uh, one of the crew workers started his job on Monday, March 27th, and he's he's helped me move um, picnic tables, and then he also helped me today stripe all the lines in the field for the soccer um, goals and everything. So he's been very good. Um, and then James is starting next Monday. James will help us move the goals in place where they need to be on Monday. Um, the trash cans are in, and they are in storage. Um, Public Works have put the soccer goals together, the lines are striped, the soccer shirts are here, and the referees are ready to be hired. Um, so I feel good about where we're at for starting the soccer season. Practice to start on Monday, so um, that's all wrapping up really well. Um, next week, we'll begin pra soccer practices on Monday, April 10th. The practices will be Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays of each week from 5.30 to 6.30. 
Um, we were going to have a jewelry making class on Wednesday the 12th, and that will that we canceled that. There was no sign up. The senior social is also on Wednesday, April the 12th, from uh, 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock at the clubhouse. The following week, bingo will be on Monday, April 17th, from 3 to 4. On April 18th, I have a webinar about ADA accessibility for parks and park events. Um, adult paint class will be on Thursday, April 20th. Rain barrel pickup event will be on Friday, April 21st. And the business showcase at Hanover High School will be Saturday, April 22nd from 11 to 3. Kids art class will be on Tuesday, April 25th. And the first soccer games will be on Saturday, April 29th. And then STEM club will be on Monday, May 1st. Very good. Lots of good stuff. Hope. Yeah. Um, I've seen a lot of really good feedback from the community. Oh, thanks. Um, I don't have any written communication. I don't either, but uh, we do have another announcement. Um, that was nice. I'll let you take it then. Mm -hmm. oh. All right. Well, happy to announce we've hired a superintendent, and she will be formally introduced at our May meeting. Um, so with that, any public comments? Yes, I do. Do <coughs> you just state your name and address? Emma Devonport, 10035 Schubert Street. Okay, my my thing is I, I'm enjoying all the stuff you guys are doing. What are we going to do for your preteens and your teens as far as activities to keep them busy and out of trouble? Right. Uh, well, a lot of the programs I'm seeing are geared more to our elderly and our young. Right. It's coming. Uh, we, we're now now we're getting into more staff. Okay. Um, and our, our budget is, we have a budget, definitely we're going to be considering the in-between as well. Okay, thank you. No problem. Thank you. Any other public comment? Going once, going twice. All right, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn then. I'll motion to adjourn. A second? I will second that. All right, this meeting is adjourned at 6.39 p.m. Next meeting is May 4th at 6 p.m.